All right, we're here with Nunzio, a.k.a. Lil Guido, former ECW Tag Team Champion. Former two e times. Former two-time ECW Tag Team Champion, former WWE talent. Uh, I want to welcome you to NoKFaden.com. Thank you for having me. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. A little tired. Coming off Extreme Riser, just got finished my match, so. Yeah. Once again, made a defeat. Oh, yeah. But uh, so by the time this airs, it's all going to be put out there anyway, so it really don't matter. So but we're on a thoughts? roll. We're on a roll right now between Extreme Reunion and Extreme Riser. The FBI is on a roll. So, what are your thoughts how this turned out, huh? You know, Extreme Rising after the Extreme Reunion. Well, the, I mean, obviously the, um, the Extreme uh, Reunion attendance was uh, excellent. Uh, everybody had high hopes going into the show. Uh, obviously, as you all know, there were some, uh, some setbacks. Um, you know, we had lighting issues, they had talent issues, you know, we had, you know, some guys, you know, as everybody knows, it's no secret, some guys, uh, you know, got a little messed up, some, some of the demons got to them. But uh, everybody pulled through, you know, I mean, I think it's kind of like anything, you know, when you come to work, you come to work, you know, prepared and ready to go, uh, doing your partying later on. That's what any job, whether you work at McDonald's, you work at the mini mart, whatever you do, no matter if it's wrestling, you know. But you know, it's all good. Now we're coming from uh, coming off of that. We're in uh, extreme rising. Uh, a lot of fans had doubts. Um, the attendance, the people are into what we're doing tonight. Uh, the attendance is definitely down. But, yeah, that's uh, what I was gonna mention. Like, what, what do you think? You think it was because of the show? What do you think happened? You think it was because of the reunion? Everybody. Uh, I mean, a lot of people uh, from, from the reunion, I think people were expecting a lot more. And then, you know, the reunion show uh, had a lot of glitches, and not just with the, yeah. the talent, but some of the matches were great. You know, some yeah. of the matches were great, but you, know, you put the whole package together, and uh, there was a lot of glitches that happened. So, you know, fans have to understand that that happens. You know, you, gotta, yeah. you, know, you can't just go to one show. Like, when a, when, a, when a band goes out there for the first time, they may have problems. You know, you just got to kind of go with it, and, uh, you know, as time goes on, you build. Yeah. Your build. That's it was the did. first show too. Yeah, yeah. It's first show. It people have to give it a chance. Yeah. This show is going really good. So yeah. hopefully, people that didn't come are going to sit there and say, you know what, we should have went out there. You know what, let's go get the DVD. You know, um, so far the show is going great, and I think uh, I think Extreme Rising is going to do very well. So you, you think know, they fixed have, a lot of the glitches? I think they definitely fixed a lot of the glitches. I mean, cool. so you know, um, you know, we got Sabu back, looking phenomenal, looking phenomenal. He had a hell of a match out there. So I. I would have everybody buy the DVD just for his match alone. Yeah. You know, he's doing great. So, um, you know, he's fighting back. He's kept to his word. He's doing good. And, uh, you know, the cameras are all better. And, you know, this show is actually looking good. And the people that didn't show up for this show, or the people that don't show up for tomorrow's show, they're missing something. The fans got to give the product a chance. Nothing yeah. is great. If Delhi opens for the first day, they're going to have problems. Yeah. You know, uh, so far, things are going 10 times better. Is attendance down? Yes. But the people that are here are getting a hell of a show, and it ain't that bad out there. You know, so... And what I was show, thinking when I came in, as soon as I looked around, the first thought that came to my mind was, maybe it was the Philly crowd that didn't come down here. Because I remember when I was out there that day, the New York crowd, the New York bus came, and the New York crowd was nothing like the Philly crowd. And it was like two buses from New York, that was it. Right, right. Well, you know? I mean, also this is a double shot. You got what, tonight in New York, and tomorrow we're doing Philly. So last time around, it was just one shot. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So you know, people, uh, you know, just like any times are tight for a lot of people. So people are like, well, hell, the people in Philly, are like, why go to New York yeah, when well, it's yeah, going to yeah. be in our hometown tomorrow? tomorrow which yeah. I know the the people that's running the show and the promotions and all. That's that. That's the first thing I thought about. Right, they're you running know. a double shot. So like the people in New York came to the show, and you know, you got to get some of these people to go down there. But the fans, you know. I'm gonna start to have we're in Philly, let's wait for it to come there. Yeah. Uh, so far I know the advance is actually pretty damn good for tomorrow. I'm yeah. gonna be honest with you, I've been to smaller shows, so you know, it's good it's a good show for what it turned out. You know, I expected more because of the ECW brand, you yeah, know. Right, right. And you got a lot of ECW guys. But it's better than a lot of the shows I've been out there, the small shows that I've been out there. So, you know. Mm -hmm. I guess it is what it is, you know? It is what it is, but you know what? You got, you know, uh, Chain Dogs is bringing back, you know, a lot of guys here uh, are in their 40s, like myself. And, you know, you're still going out there, you're still going out there to entertain. That's what fans have to understand. The same young guys, when I first started with ECW, I was 24 years old, 
you know, hungry at I'm not hungry now, but life is different for me. You know, I, I wanted to make it to the, in ECW and I did. Yeah. And doing good there brought me to the dance for WWE and, you know, I mean, even though it's a work, still, they had, I have the Cruiserweight title uh, two times in the WWE, at least they gave, they had prided me to hand me that title. You know, yeah. and uh, as much as it's a work and you don't have to have a big head about it, but still, it's, it's just, gotta be good. It's though. gotta be good. It's gotta a good feel. It's like do. anything. When you're in the NBA, you want to win the championship. When you're in oh. soccer, whatever it is, you're in the World Series when you're playing baseball, you want to be in the Super Bowl when you're playing football. So there's nothing wrong with that. So you know, I had a hell of a career. I'm coming up 40 years old. You know, I I, I have a bunch of injuries, but I'm still out there going. You yeah. know, so I don't care what the fans say about me because what I've done in my life, they probably can't do. You mentioned that that it's a work or whatever, you know, and I and I hear a couple a uh, couple of wrestlers say things like that. And, you know, I just gotta compliment you because you could say it's a work as much as you want, but you gotta be good at what you do in order for them to crown you with the belt, you know. So right. as so much as it's a work, it's account. real too at the it's same real time. Too, you know? Because if you don't deserve it, they ain't exactly. Give it to you. So you know, they had confidence in me. They gave it to me two times. Held it for you know, they knew I would do some good matches. They put me on pay per view with it a couple times. Ran me around the house show loop. And then when it was time to go, you know, it's time to go. You know, people always say to me, you know, when I got released from WWE, you know, they, the first thing everybody wanted to sit down and say, oh, fuck you, Vince McMahon, what the fuck, so he sucks, why, you know, he fired you. I'm like, listen, it's like, you know, you know going in, it's going to end. You know, I'm just reality based. I knew when I got yeah. there, one day it's going to end. You know, I'm not going to stay there forever. And I'm not just saying that. I don't have to bury, like, I leave the WWE and curse him out and shit. My time is up, you know, to me, I look at it like a sitcom, you know, Three's company runs for years and years, and Friends runs for years and years, sooner or later, writers have nothing for you, they gotta release you, Vince has yeah. to release you to bring other people in. That's when I, when, like when I left the WWE, I, my phone was ringing off the hooks for interviews, and they were like, well, why'd they get rid of you, you're great, blah, 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 it was time, you know, yeah. that guy gave me, from 2002 to 08, I was there for many years, I made a, a career in the wrestling business from 1994, from 94 to 96, I was in Japan working for UWFI, from 96 to 2000, uh, I got my opportunity with ECW and learned how to uh, work in front of like smart crowds and do programs with people and work the cameras and know how it is to work territories where fans know who you are so you know how to play off compared to independence where one night you'll work one building, uh, you, next night you work 200 miles away for a different promoter, you can do the same match. Where you learn when you when you're working on TV, you can't do the same match because once yeah. you do that match on TV, the world sees it. So it makes your mind think harder. Yeah. So you know, by me doing all those years at ECW, when I got to WWE, I already knew a lot of stuff. So all I had to do was roll with it, and I had a little bit of a name for myself. You know, was I a top guy in in, w, in ECW? No, but I was a, a part of the roster and I was a mainstay there. And then I held, you know, I, I held many many years in the WWE and. You know, when it was time for me to go, it was time for me to go, you know. And I'm not just not burying, I'm probably never going to go to WWE again. I'm not just not burying them because no, it's true. Know, I'm not going back, I'm done. I'm and, gonna be, I, I had a conversation with you one time, you probably, know, you probably don't even remember, it was in a, I think it was in a church. And you said you was like, yo, I made, I, I made the money. The money I made there, I still have. Those right. are the words. Well, I saved me. all my money. You know, so I still, I still have it. That's so a good thing, I, man. You know. Well, I went it's out. It's a good way to look at it too. Well, you know, I, I use wrestling afterwards. You know, people, you know, with YouTube and, and stuff like that. Like the job I got now, uh, a lot of it was due through uh, people with fans. You know, like, wow, you're retired now, yeah. and this like that. You know, what are you doing so now? And I'm, like, I'm not doing. I'm not doing nothing. You know, yeah. and they just they want to help you. You know, the fans, yeah. you know, you know, the wrestling business don't give you benefits. They don't give you retirement. I knew that when I was there. So when I was making six figures and a lot of money, I made my own retirement. I made, I held, I, got, right. I got my own benefits. You know, and that's just the way it is. I knew, and Smart. my money, I still have it. So you know, for all the the boys out there, say, oh, you know, uh, I'm not naming any names, but a lot of them say, you know, oh, they didn't give us this, they didn't give us that. You know, going in, they didn't give it to you. Yeah. So in my, I knew that going in too. That's why well, I saved my money. You took. And that's a chance you took, but it's a, you know, I went from wrestling in front of 200 people and, and fucking, say, Manuel High School, which is where I went, which I wrestled there and suffered in high school, to wrestling in the Hammerstein Ballroom in ECW, to making it to Madison Square Garden in New York City. Wow. How could I ever dog the WWE or anything like yeah. that? I'm kissing Vince's ass, it don't fucking matter, I'm never going back there anyway. Yeah, the reason why I said what that I never would have had before. The reason why I said what I said, because... That was way before I even started doing this. No cameras was on when you said what you said. That's the way I And thought. you didn't bury him. No. You know, There's so no reason to bury him. It's true what he's saying. You know, it's not like for the cameras. You know, you're not That's trying my to true bury feeling. him. You know, yeah. Like I said, I'm not just saying it because I don't want to burn any bridges. There's nothing to say bad about him. I mean, yeah. I'm not just, you know, 
Yeah. I don't care anybody that's watching this, whether they're the boys or not. I said, oh, look at him, he's kissing his ass. Fuck you, I ain't kissing his ass. Yeah. I just have no reason to bury him. He never did nothing bad to me, yeah. besides make me famous in the wrestling business. Yeah. Should I fucking dog him? No. Were you born in Italy? No, I was born in Howard Beach, not too far from here. Corona. I lived in Howard Beach for many years. Uh, that's what, Brooklyn? No, Howard Queens. Beach is Queens. Queens. Not too far, right down the road from here. I used to live in New York, cross, I don't know. <laughs> Right from uh, down the block from New Park Beach. I was living in Howard Beach in '86 when all that stuff so happened. So your parents are the... Italian? Uh, yeah, my whole family. Both of them. Yep, yep. Yeah. They're Sicilian. They're Sicilian. So I was born in Howard Beach, so then I moved up to Rockland County. Uh, you were born in Queens and raised in New York. Yep. Your whole raised, life. Yeah, all my life. All my oh. life. I'm a New Yorker. I never stopped. So where'd you grow up at? I grew up until I was 11 years old in Howard Beach, and then I went to Rockland County, New York, and I grew up in Nanuet, went to Nanuet High School, wrestled for Nanuet, played football. I was actually part of the undefeated, untied, and scored upon team. I'm in the Nanuet Hall of Fame uh, that yeah. they have. Nobody uh, beat us one year. We were 10 out, 10 and 0, undefeated, yeah, I read untied, and scored. In Rockland County. Rockland School County, yeah. I was in Rockland County. Well, Nanuet's in Rockland County. That's where I live now. I still yeah. live in Rockland County. I was captain of my wrestling team in high school. Yeah. I was an athlete all my life. Yeah, I was captain wow. of the wrestling team my senior year. How much year. weight? Uh, I was captain of my senior year. I was 177. Uh, right now I'm about 165. But you know, so when you're I was a shoe wrestler. Out. Yes. Uh, well, I knew amateur wrestling. And then uh, when I graduated high school, I got trained by Billy Robinson in Japan where I was Shoe uh, wrestling, wrestling, for those who don't know, is what? Shoe wrestling. It's like catch as catch can. It's amateur wrestling it's built in with submission. It's real wrestling, right? Yeah. So uh, when I got trained by Billy Robinson, and Luke Dez and Danny Hodge, they added the submissions, the chokes, the arm bars and all that shit. They didn't yeah. teach me how to wrestle because I already knew how to wrestle, take downs and all that stuff. They <laughs> added the submission. Because in amateur wrestling, you're not allowed to go more than 45 degree angles in high school and even in the Olympics, but it's still called amateur wrestling. You yeah. know? Object of shoot wrestling is to go more than 45 to the point of break and that's the whole thing that's tapping out because if you don't tap out, you're gonna fucking break so your arm, yeah. choke you out or do whatever you gotta do. Yeah. You know, it's so weird, like I was doing that shit you know, before like UFC was ever around, it was UWF and trained? Pancreas. Uh, not for that. Now I can't. You're not you know, training martial arts? Mixed no, martial arts no, no, nothing like that. Nothing like that. Those days are over for me, man. I still, I bang out my shows here. Still try to go as long as I could in the ring, entertain the people, make some extra money. I have a nice little gig going on for myself. I establish myself in the real world. So, you know, I do this for fun. And don't get me wrong, I make a few extra bucks. You know, I make some good money by the end of the month. But I, you know, still do my regular thing too. So what's your earliest memory of wanting to get into the wrestling business? Well, I, professional I, wrestling well, I, business, my, not amateur. Professional. Right, right, well, I was a fan since I was 10 years old. I used to stay up to 12 o'clock at night and watch the WWE when it was on at midnight after uh, the, the Meadowlands. It used to be on Channel 9, then it was on Saturday mornings first at 11 o'clock. And my father used to take me to Madison Square Garden all the time in the Westchester County Center. And uh, again, I, my father took me and my brother to WrestleMania 1 in Madison Square Garden. And whoever known, when I was in there with my dad and my brother, 20 years later, I was able to wrestle in, in uh, Madison Square Garden in WrestleMania 20. Not just attended, I was in a match 20 years later in WrestleMania, which is the Super Bowl in wrestling. So whoever known 20 years later, my father will be sitting there again. This time he's going to be watching me in front of the sold-out Madison Square Garden. Now, I wrestled in Madison Square Garden 50 times, but that's a dream for me just to be in WrestleMania, which is the biggest pay-per-view of the year. You know, plus the biggest payday you're ever going to make for one night in, in the ring. So I've always wanted to be a professional wrestler since I was like 10 years old. I used to go watch it like religiously. I was crazy about it. And 